Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Terry, and I am so glad that you decided to join me today for another video. So yesterday was May 15th and it was, it's been 40 days since we posted our last video. And it's also one year, one year to the day that I started to transition out of the Seventh-day Adventist church that I have gone to pre-COVID. So yesterday was a pretty big day for me. Now, we've been trying to post videos over the last 40 days, but one video idea after the other, we just felt no peace because we both knew, Carrie and I, what the Lord wanted us to post next. This video has been on my heart since last May when I left the Seventh-day Adventist church I was going to. And I kept asking God for more time. I kept asking him for more time because I know what this video is going to cost me. It's going to cost me everything. Every single friend that I have that I care about, and to me, their family, they're Seventh-day Adventist. Every single connection, every single family that I have, every single friend group that I have, they're all Seventh-day Adventist. I am going to lose everything when I officially make this video. And it has been hard for the last 40 days to make it. And I've been asking God for more time, but you know, over the last 40 days, I had to make sure that I become obedient. So I am making this video today. <sighs> Nevertheless, I have to make this video because I have to be obedient to God. And so in this video, I'm gonna briefly share just my journey and um, why I have decided that I am no longer going to be a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. At eight years old, I was looking up in the sky and I felt God around me so real, it's almost like I could reach out and touch him. And I said, God, you know, if you're real, please show yourself to me. And he did. You know, God pursued me ever since I was eight years old. And I've, I've always wanted God, you know, he's always led me and after, 20 years celebrating year 20 with the Lord you know I've just lived to see God in the most beautiful of ways like like everything he did every painful moment every disappointment every tear I've cried every single thing that God has done it has been for my good and and for his glory like I know God to be the one to bring beauty from ashes from any ashes like he has proved himself to be faithful he is so faithful and everything he has done has been for my good. So this all started for me last April when I was speaking with somebody really dear to me. And I was telling the person that, you know, I just, I don't believe the things of the Seven Adventist Church. It's almost like I'm living a lie because I show up every Saturday and I don't believe anything pretty much that, you know, it's taught in the church. And after I came home from that conversation, it's almost as if just the chasm between myself and the Seven Adventist Church just got even wider. And I remember talking to God and saying, Lord, you know, what do I do? So after asking the Lord what to do, literally, it was two weeks later, that the Lord just began to show me just some like personalities and just some things within the church that were just not right. I wrote this part down, so I'm going to read it. Only two weeks later, God and his providence would begin to move circumstances in motion that would catapult me into his will. The Lord began to peel back the layers of the denomination I was attending, one false ideology after the next. I began to see ungodly and prideful motives in many, prideful motives in many. Some were extreme and legalistic, while others were just apathetic towards a pure and intimate walk with God. It was like I was watching a puppet show only from the other side, seeing all the strings being controlled by a puppet master. What was once my church culture, my Sabbath fellowship, and a little unbiblical teaching, you know, here and there, became a horrendous and heretical performance. Now all people are imperfect and every church has their flaws. Nevertheless, the Lord began to give me insight to pattern behavior of control and manipulation that occurred within many high-ranking members of the church. I also began to see certain individuals that back in the day, there was just a small leaven of legalism and it had now led to like really extreme and cultic ideas one such idea was that, you know, one of a friend of mine, you know, as we were talking, 
began to explain that wearing long sleeve shirts were healthier than wearing short sleeve shirts, even if you were in the confines of your own home. And so a basic t-shirt that had a short sleeve um, is not as healthy as wearing a long sleeve shirt. Now, there's nothing really wrong with that, but what I had a problem was, was, you know, the person began to explain, now, if I know that wearing long sleeve shirt is healthier and I choose not to, then of course I'm sinning against God by not choosing the healthier thing. And so I'm forfeiting my salvation. You heard me right. Salvation being forfeited over t-shirts. I mean, this conversation sent me, sent me straight to my knees. And I just was crying out to God for myself and for my friends because I'm just like, God, what is this and what's going on? You know, like in the same time, um, I was reading through the entire Bible and providentially, I found myself in that particular season right in the book of Romans. And that's exactly where I needed to be because I started reading about the gospel. After reading through Romans thoughtfully and carefully for the first time, the gospel became abundantly clear and overwhelmingly and breathtakingly and profoundly real. By grace through faith, no longer held a clause or a condition or a stipulation. The cross was sufficient. The sacrifice of Christ was not insurance. It was assurance, blessed assurance. This and many other things led me to confront the inevitable. After five years, I knew that the church I was attending was not just off on a little minute doctrines. Their entire soteriology, which is their doctrine on salvation and the gospel, it was anti-gospel and unbiblical. Over the next year, I would continue to fall even more in love with scripture. The more I learned of the Bible, the greater the chasm between myself and Seventh-day Adventism became until I finally knew I would never be able to return to my church with a clear conscience. Many asked me, when are you coming back, Terry? When are you returning? And my answer was always, you know, I'm, I'm seeking God about a few things. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> I have still not really had conversations with my church family because I anticipate that it will cause me a lot of relationships and it already has, you know. I have prayed about the best approach to transition to, to doing this video. And the Lord has assured me that my allegiance lies with him and not with other people. Now, this is just a brief introduction to a few videos that will come in the future. But I want to make the point that, you know, this video really hurts me a lot to make it because it just, it's just really difficult. You know, you know, even making this video, I can still see my little kiddos at church, you know, like my boys, they would come to me after AY and ask me to go find the basketball so we can go play ball. And, and like my little girlies, you know, they would come and tell me about their week at elementary and middle school. I got, I got all the tea, okay? And asked me to take them to the store. <laughs> I really would do a lot to just go back to my church and have a Sabbath where I sit down and enjoy the fellowship. And I just really sometimes wish it was just true and that's the thing like if it would if, it, if only it were true everything that i have experienced for the last year would disappear i could go back to my church i can resume life as normal you know it would be great and this is causing me a lot because i do miss my church family immensely i miss i just miss the the, the comfort of knowing you're around a group of people and you are just sharing life together and it's awesome, you know, and I don't have that from my church family anymore because I don't attend the church anymore and it really hurts. But the gospel is worth it. The freedom in Christ is worth it. The truth is worth it. And so over the next few weeks, maybe months, I am going to be going through very thoughtfully and carefully some of the doctrines that I have found very problematic in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Some of some of the things are like um, the investigative judgment, the authenticity of LNG write, LNG White's writings, um, just topics like the health laws and the food laws and it, is it consistent with, with the Bible, um, just talking about the three angels message and their interpretation of Revelation. Uh, chapter 1 and chapter 12, 13, and 14, also Daniel 7 and 8, um, 
and just kind of go through like you know sunday sacredness and their false teachings on those things um and my goal is not to pick a bone i don't have a bone to pick with anyone like this is this is so something that i tell the lord all the time the first time the lord brought it to me i broke down in prayer because i was like god why me i don't want to be the one to do this like i don't want to be the one to say these things it's uncomfortable it's hard it's not it's not something that it's my forte i don't like confrontations i don't like bickering and arguing i don't like tension i just like to be chill you know what i'm saying and this is very hard for me but i have to be obedient and so i'm gonna be sharing and um it's God's truth and, it, and it's his to defend. It's not mine to defend. So that's it for me today, guys. And I'm all out of storage. But as we always say on our channel, guys, have fun, have faith, and be free. And um, hopefully you join us next week as I do my first video. And I'm going to be talking exclusively about the errors within the investigative judgment. Thank you, guys. I hope you heard my heart. To God be the glory. And um, I welcome any comments as long as you're kind and, uh, and, and Christ-centered. And um, thank you guys again for watching our video. Bye. Take care.